Well, let's turn now to Keith Cowley. He's a former rocket scientist and editor of spaceref.com. Keith, thanks for joining us. Uh, you know, we just heard there it'll take a, a few years before scientists get back any data from Lucy. I imagine then it'll take some time to dissect that data. But how much of a game changer might the information we get from this uh, affect our understanding of the universe? Well, these Trojan asteroids, as was shown in your animation, have been in these locations um, before and behind Jupiter's orbit, but they've been there for billions of years. And that stuff probably got there as the planets, including the one we're both sitting on, were forming. So what you've got is sort of the Lego bricks of how all the planets in the solar system form. And they pretty much stayed that way. It's really cold out there. There isn't a lot of sunlight. So if you want to get an idea of what our planet was built out of, this is one of the places to go to look at the stuff. And it's, again, it's like been in deep freeze for many billions of years. What do you learn from that? Well, I mean, the more you, you learn where your world came from. We heard there before about the Shenzhou 13, the, the radial landing. Uh, it's risky. So what would necessi necessitate that? Well, most space stations are, as, including this one, are well designed so that you have more than one way to do everything, one more than one way to dock, uh, to go outside, and so forth. And so the previous mission did a radial dock, uh, which was in like this. This one was a little trickier. It came up like this. But that's what we do on the International Space Station all the time. And so you, as you build the space station out, as you add modules and capability, you want to be able to try everything at least once first to make sure it works, and maybe a second time. So that is what this mission is doing. It's also doubling the period of time that the people who are going to be on the space station will be there. And so you'll just see incrementally this is a world-class space station. And it's going to be adding these pieces and testing everyone every time every one of them is added. This is a busy uh, month for space missions, China there, the U.S., but also Russia, Japan, South Korea. H how much of a space race is this? Are we seeing any sort of cooperation uh, up there? You know, it's interesting, really. This, this, the term space race is from my childhood 50-some years ago. You hear it every now and then whenever you want to discuss everybody doing everything in space, and we sort of go back to the way things once were. There may be a race going on here, but you have to agree to be in a race, whether there be a race. But the race or the competition that's going on now is more for, in many ways, how to collaborate with other people who are doing things. Yes, we have these issues of military stuff in space that's been there for the, since the dawn of the space age. But what you see with China's space station, although politics between the U.S. and China can prevent that right now, we also have some political issues with Russia, yet we've had this wonderful cooperation with them for two decades. So I think this thing that space shows is that sometimes you may have problems getting along with people on Earth, but in space, it seems to, for some reason, be a higher purpose to get along with people. And as I often say on your shows, maybe they're, we're learning something in space about how we should behave on Earth with each other. You know, a lot of people on the ground wondering, will any of these missions have any impact on space tourism, on, on people watching at home one day, maybe getting up there? Well, you know, in terms of the people who've flown, they come back and say, it was great, but I want to go for longer. Where you go for longer is the space stations. And right now, you can buy a ticket. You really would probably have to talk to your producers about getting a trip up there, but it's, it's still very expensive. But, you know, these things tend to come down in prices more people want to do them. And as we saw just the other day, William Shatner was on a flight with people where the tickets were a lot less expensive. Of course, she didn't go as far. And so somewhere, you know, it's the connection of you, you, you take your first airplane flight and then you say, gee, I want to go to around the world. You know, these things build in steps. But people, gotta, people have to want to do these things in order for there to be a market. And it's pretty clear a lot of people would love to go into space.